Hi everyone. So I have these 18650 cells, lithium ion cells. I've got the Samsung one, the Sony one, and the the other one, whatever it is. I've got a number of these. I think I've got about 100 or something like that. And um, to be able to use them properly in pairs or, or more than pairs, really the uh, capacities need to be matched. And um, you need to know the capacities for various other things anyway, like, you know, to find out which capacity is going to be suitable for certain jobs. So yeah, there's a need to find out the capacity of the cells. Anyway, so that's what this video is going to be about. So what I want to do in this video is plan a, um, well not a circuit diagram as such, but I want to plan a capacity tester. I want to get a rough idea of what's involved and a rough idea of how I'm going to go about making this thing. So we have our lithium ion cell and we want to measure its capacity. To start with, what is capacity? Well, capacity is the amount of current which it can sustain in a given amount of time. So if this was to, um, to be able to output, for example, um, one amp, and it could output that for one hour, then this would be a one amp hour cell, and it would have a capacity of one amp hour. Um, or in terms of little cells like this, you would actually measure it in milliamp hour. So one amp hour is 1000 milliamp hour, and that's its capacity. So let's go a little bit further now. With lithium ion cells, they of course have a nominal voltage, a charging voltage, and an empty voltage. So the nominal voltage to start with, usually for a lithium ion cell, is 3.6 volts. So what it means by nominal is the voltage which you expect the cell to be, or the voltage of the thing which it's supposed to power. So if this cell is supposed to power something that requires 3.6 volts, it needs to be charged at higher than that in order for the potential difference to be strong enough to be able to uh, to power the device. So you would charge the cell at 4.2 volts and basically it starts dropping down and down and down and then when it reaches 3 volts you would usually uh, take the cell out and replace it. So yeah 4.2 volts is fully charged, 3.6 volts is half charged and 3 volts is empty. Um, now that's kind of weird because you, you can sort of think 3 volts, that's not empty, if it's 3 volts there's still some, some there, and there is, but there are two reasons why uh, you would say 3 volts is empty. One of them is because you don't want to damage the cell, and by discharging them too much uh, you can damage them. The other thing is, at 3 volts that's probably not going to be useful for the thing it's intended to power. If the thing it's intended to power is 3.6 volts, 3 volts is not going to be useful. So, if we were to fully charge this cell to 4.2 volts and then apply a 1 amp load and measure how long it takes until we get to 3 volts, um, we could very simply measure the capacity of this cell, right? Theoretically, yes, but it's actually really not that simple. And um, the reason being is that it's hard to maintain a 1 amp load on it. And uh, I'll explain why. So what happens is that the 4.2 volts uh, fully charged state here, when you apply the load, it starts to drop, of course. It starts to discharge. So it discharges, 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 discharge, until it gets flat. But if you were to apply a 1 amp load, a 1 amp resistive load to that, the 1 amp load would also decrease. If the voltage decreases, the load will decrease. And um, I'll explain this now. So if I just draw Ohm's triangle, we've got E, I, R. So we've got voltage, amperage, and resistance. So, right, what I'm going to explain is that you can't easily hold a 1 amp load on it because as soon as the battery starts to discharge, the load will discharge. Right, so let's say, for example, We've got a 10 volt power source, and we've got a resistor of 10 ohms. So we've got 10 volts, divide that by 10, and that is 1. So, 10 volts 
10 ohms and 1 amp. But as soon as this here, the voltage, starts to uh, discharge and get lower, let's try it again. So now we've got 9 volts. So we've got 9 volts. The resistance is still the same, so it's 10. So 9 divided by 10, it is 0 0.9. So this just demonstrates a voltage drop. So if we started with 10 volts and it dropped to 9 volts, with the same resistance, the current would drop. So if this was to discharge, you can see here that the amperage also gets lower. So it's not possible to easily measure uh, you know, how long it takes to discharge at 1 amp because 1 amp doesn't stay at 1 amp. Ordinarily, 1 amp wouldn't stay at 1 amp. So you say, oh, it could take it will take an hour to discharge at one amp, but what you may not realise is that it's not discharging at one amp for the whole time. It sort of decreases. So as as voltage decreases, the amperage decreases. So it's not so simple. So in order to use this sort of methodology, in order to uh, measure capacity, what you'd have to do is you'd have to hold the current at one amp. Well, not necessarily 1 amp, but for the sake of uh, arguments, let's say 1 amp. So if you were to measure uh, 1 amp uh, load on this, and it took 1 hour, then 1 amp hour. So yeah, um, in order to do that, it's not so simple. Actually, the way you would do it, though, is by um, messing about with the resistance. So if the voltage was to drop, and of course you know it's going to drop because you've got a load on it, what you'd have to do in order to maintain the amperage at 1 amp, you'd have to do something to vary the resistance. Now, I'm not exactly sure how you'd do that. I mean, I'm sure there's a way of doing it, but it doesn't sound very simple to me. So, what we can do to, um, to measure capacity is actually fix the resistor. So instead of fixing the amperage or the amount of current and measuring the time, we can fix the resistor then know the current and then just do some calculations afterwards to find out the capacity that way and for me this is a bit of an easier way but anyway I'll just demonstrate so I'll do ohms triangle so we've got E I and R we've got our cell which will be 4.2 volts when it's fully charged and if I was to say put a resistor of a resistance 10 ohms um, how much current would flow? Well, 4.2 divided by 10 is 0 0.42, and that's amps. So 420 milliamps. And that's an okay uh, load. I mean, 420 milliamps, this could easily deal with that amount of load. And we just see how long it takes to, uh, to discharge at that fairly low rate. And then, as this reduces, so will the um, so will this value here? So if I was to repeat that for three volts, so let's do it down here, three point zero divided by the ten ohms. Three divided by ten is zero point three. So that is three hundred milliamps. So when it's fully charged, it will drain that much. When it's empty, it will drain that much. And we just measure how long, uh, do some calculations, and work it out via mathematics. However, now we're posed with a bit, with a bit of an issue. 420 milliamps or 300 milliamps, um, this could discharge at a much faster rate than that. And I don't particularly want to wait for this to discharge at that rate. It's, it will be too slow. So this thing... Uh, drained by 420 milliamps will probably take a long time, maybe several hours, and I don't really want to wait that much. So what I can do is decrease the resistance and therefore increase the amount of current which can flow through it. But um, again, I'm limited, and the reason why I'm limited is because I'm, I don't have that many resistors. And the amount of resistors I do have, I'd have to remember that they'd have to be able to deal with the amount of heat or wattage which is dissipated from, from burning off this much energy. Because, of course, to test the capacity of these cells, we've actually got to burn off some energy.